I guess no man will ever be Dan. I guess no man will ever be Dan. Ever be Dan Boom. It has never been clearly explained how Daniel Boone's long rifle came to be called Pick Licker. Maybe it was just his way of saying it shot true enough to lick a tick off a target, or maybe it was the name of the gunmaker. Nobody knows. But the fact remains that Daniel could do just about what he wanted to with that rifle. And it's recorded, too, that on many occasions, when he didn't have time to reload, he brought down two attacking Indians with one shot. A kind of a billiard shot, you might call it. But there's such a thing as being too good, particularly at the wrong time. That happened in our first story, when Daniel and his brother Squire were captured in Kentucky, and Daniel was forced into a shoot-down with his arch enemy, Crowfeather. No, you go ahead while I check my prime. Crowfeather's shot was good. but not good enough because Daniel was shooting for his life. He put his ball smack in the bull's eye. Crowfeather accused him of cheating and tried to kill him on the spot. But Blackfish was either a just man or he enjoyed a good fight. He stuck a tomahawk in a tree and told Daniel and Crowfeather to run for it. Now Daniel was a peace-loving man, but he had never backed away from a fair fight, particularly with his own life at stake. Yes, Daniel won that fight and came home to learn that Rebecca had presented him with a son. James Boone. That ain't enough name for you, boy. James Finley Stewart Boone. That all right with you, Rebecca? The Finley Stewart part of it, that'll remind me to stay home, settle down, make the farm pay. If you live to be a hundred and have a hundred children, you'll never stay put while there's a mountain to be crossed. Rebecca was only partly right. Daniel stayed put for five or six years and had two more children, but he never forgot Kentucky, his big dream. In this story called And Chased the Buffalo, We'll see how his dream came to fruition, how Daniel gave up everything, including his own family, almost, to satisfy his dream. Come all you fine brave neighbors who have a mind to go to settle in Kentucky and chase the buffalo in some far distant country. We lay us down upon the banks of blessed Ohio. Can I go now, Ma? Oh, there's still Mr. Finley's cart, son. Who's Mr. Finley? He was a peddler and a friend of your father's. If this is his wagon, what's it doing here? Your father promised to keep it for him. Isn't Mr. Finley ever coming to get it? No, son. He went to Kentucky with your father and was killed by the arrowhead your pa wears on his watch fob. Well, I guess he isn't coming back then. Can I go now? All right, son. Oh, the rabbit shot the monkey And the monkey shot the crow We'll ramble through the cane break And shoot the buffalo all the way from Yadkin Valley to Kentucky I did go to rally round the cane break and shoot the buffalo. Come all ye fine old fellas, it's time again to range to some far distant country 
your fortune there to change. Oh, the rabbit shot the monkey, and the monkey shot the crow. We'll ramble in the cane break and chase the buffalo. Not again, Daniel. Please, not again. Makes you think of Kentucky, doesn't it? Oh, I was just uh, looking at the time. A strange new earth and a new sky. That's what you said you saw there. Funny you should remember that after all these years. The exact words. You've never forgotten it. How could I? I was just thinking about Mr. Finley's old peddler cart. Maybe I ought to get rid of it. Sell it, maybe. It's taking up good room in the barn. Then you'd better get rid of the arrowhead, too. That's not the answer, is it, Daniel? If you remember Mr. Finley because you were there, you saw him killed and his suffering was yours. You don't remember mine because you weren't here. You never saw one of your children born. I know what you're trying to say, Rebecca. But hunting's the thing I know best. It helps us get along, too, when the crops are bad. I tried freighting and blacksmithing. You know I did. Oh, I know you did, Daniel. You tried hard. But the truth is, we're more in debt now than we ever were. But it's no disgrace to be taken to debtor's court. Well, half the men in Yadkin Valley have been there since they raised the taxes. It's a fault of them thieving, mealy-mouthed land agents. Now you sound like Mordecai Tompkins and the rebellionists. Why not? I'd like to fill some of them sneaking tax collectors full of buckshot like Cecil Calvert did. And end up in jail like him? I don't care. Now, is that any way for a good Quaker husband to sound? No, I suppose not. There's been too much violence anyway. You know why? Because there's too many dad drab people trying to settle in one place. Do you know that I heard there's almost 50,000 souls now just here in North Carolina? And on a clear day, I can see the smoke from the Watkins cabin. I know what you're leading up to, Daniel Boone. You're getting ready to go off into the wilderness and chase the buffalo. Will you be honest with yourself for once, Daniel? Why, you really go off on these hunting trips and risk being killed by Indians. You're still dreaming about Kentucky, courting it like a man does a woman. What did you get out of that paradise on earth, Daniel? Two graves. Johnny Stewart's and Mr. Finley's. You've seen all there is to see of Kentucky, Daniel. Stay home. Yeah. You're right, Rebecca. There's no need to say any more. There'll never be no more hunting trips to Kentucky. This year or ever. Never another hunting trip. You and your flowers. Well, you know, the Bible says that man does not live by bread alone. Uh, I guess I can't argue about that. Daniel, I thought you and James were going out to plow. Sure. But like you say, man doesn't live by bread alone. Gotta have a little meat to go along with it. After all, man never knows when he might be attacked by a mean man-eating rabbit or a ferocious squirrel. Daniel, what you said the other night about hunting, about Kentucky, did you mean it? I'm here, Ada. Let's go to work, son. 
Not at the moment. He's plowing in the north field. What's wrong, Samuel? Cecil. Cecil Calvert. What about him? I'll tell you what about him. He's going to hang tomorrow. Oh, no. They're going to hang him in the village square. They're going to make an example of him to the rest of us. Why, they, they can't do that. They're going to try. Your husband's good friend, Judge Henderson, signed the order. Let's be fair, Mordecai. Judge had to do it. Sure. Governor, try and set on breaking the rebellionists. Well, what can we do? I'll tell you one thing. We ain't going to see Cecil Calvert hanged, that's for sure. We expect Daniel to be with us. Or against us. Ain't no such thing as a gray cat, Rebecca. You're on one side of the line or the other. We know his brother Squire feels like we do. We ain't for sure Daniel sees things our way. If he doesn't show up, we'll know he's against us. I'm... I'm sure my husband will do what he feels is right. Well, we sure hope he feels right about this. Shot the monkey and the monkey shot the crow. We'll ramble in the cane, break and chase the buffalo. <laughs> you picked up my style of singing real good, son. But it still ain't loud enough. You should let go big, so the smallest things around you can enjoy it too. So big that the beaver will stop building his dam. So the rabbit, chipmunk, and the red squirrel will all sit up on their hind ends and clap their paws. And so is the old mom bear will take notice and give you a wide path. And you don't have to stick to any words just because it was written down like that. Now listen. No more will I go a hunting for the pelt of the buffalo. No, I'm gonna settle down. On the bank of Ohio. See? I see. Come on, I want to show you something. Sit down. You know what this is? Mr. Finley's rifle, boy. The best that money can buy. Mr. Finley's? It's yours now. Mine? Yep. I want you to take care of it. Do it honor. The barrel is made true and smooth. A shot will go through her slick and a grease show through a cornfield. Stand up. Let's see if it's right for size. Well, after you grow a mite, it'll be as perfect for you as tick liquor is for me. This isn't my birthday, is it? Nope. Then why? It's more important than a birthday present, son. I gave you this gun, James, cause the next time I see Kentucky, it's gonna be with your ma, and you, and Jemima and Israel, like it was with Mr. Finley. Your ma don't know it yet, even though I got the big idea from talking to her. Nobody knows it except you. But someday, son, we're gonna settle down there. For good? Yes, sir. Whole hog, right down to the last bristle of the tail. We're gonna settle down on land that runs as far as the eye can see. We'll spread out on it, breathe in deep. And I'm gonna need a good man on my side. Like I always say, the only way to live to a ripe old age in Indian country is to think Indian. 
So from today on, I'm going to teach you all the tricks I know about the woods. The first thing I'm going to teach you is that all sounds in the woods mean something. Oh, I know that. Oh, do you now? All right. What's that? That's a lynx scratching the bark. And that, that weird kind of scraping noise. What's that? That's a leaning tree rubbing against another as the wind touches it. Now, what's that? Why, that's a red squirrel crossing a patch of wet leaves. Where? Not a stone's throw from your new home, smack dab in the middle of Cane Tuck. <laughs> <laughs> Son, some things you learn from me and some things you learn alone. Like what? Oh, like when you don't use a gun to shoot anything useless. See, there's only three reasons for killing. You kill for food, for skins to make your clothes, and to protect yourself from wild critters. You understand? I understand. Any other killing is wrong, like the good book says. Now, there's another important thing I want you to remember when you're hunting in strange country. This is to keep you from getting lost. You pick a marker like, uh, oh, like that high tree yonder. And you keep it off your right shoulder, say. And it'll take you clean around and back where you started. See? I see. Good. Now, let's see what you can bring home for supper. Alone? Sure. But you told me never to go alone. I know, but it's different now. You've got a gun. Besides, you grow it up. This is a big day in your life, boy. i got to record it proper-like. Well, she's going to be worried and mad if you don't bring home something for supper. What's the matter, boy? You hurt? Well, what is it? Speak up. I saw a bear. And you got scared? I'm sorry, Pa. Nothing wrong getting scared. Bear got scared, too. He took off the same as you. The thing you got to remember is don't panic. When a man panics, he stops thinking. Now, that's when he gets hurt. See? Yes, Pa. You go. You go ahead and get our supper. Now, don't cock the hammer to get ready to shoot. Do I have to go now? It's the only way you can lick a scare, boy. You lick it now, and you got to lick for good. Tall tree over my right shoulder. Forget. 
can't eat a fox. So small, Poss is nothing less than a yearling's fatigue. Big tree off my right shoulder. What's up, Blazes? Why don't you look where you're shooting? I did, Pa. I thought you was a deer. You don't see any horns on my wedding hat now, do you? And you look at there. Look at there. You shot a hole clean through it. I'm sorry, Pa. That's not the important thing, boy. The important thing is... Well, well I was standing right there by that tree. The tree where I left you? I hadn't budged an inch. Then... Then I circled back. I kept the marker off my right shoulder. I didn't get lost. Why, that's right, boy. You circled back just like I told you. Now, that's the important thing. Yes, sir, you're going to be quite a woodsman by the time we get to Kentuck. How soon we going, Pa? Yeah, well, uh, soon as we break it to you more. Gentle-like. <laughs> Yes, sir, I never saw tougher roots than on that north pasture. Some of them bigger around than James there. We was just lucky that old plow had cut through them, wasn't we, boy? Sure, Pa. Go on. Digging out them rocks and carrying them off. Plum tucking us out, didn't it, boy? Yeah, Pa. Made him and me hotter than a Dutch oven with the biscuits burning. Was that before or after Ma went out looking for you in the pasture? Well, uh, we did take a few minutes off to do a little resting up. That's when Pa gave me Mr. Finley's gun and showed me how to use it for when we get to Kentuck. Uh-oh. Kentucky? Daniel, what sort of ideas have you been putting in this boy's head? You can't give a boy a gun without showing him how to use it. That isn't what I mean. If you <laughs> think... Fire! The militia! What about him, Squire? They're burning Sam Watkins' barn! I'll be right with you. Get all the stock out, Sam. The militiamen started, Sam. Strutting, Pop and Jay. Whole winter supply of hay gone up in smoke. What was the complaint this time? Uh, read it yourself. Here, let me see it. For his known sympathies to the treasonable cause of the rebellionists 
and for falsifying his crop reports to the tax collectors, it is ordered that his barn and all its contents be destroyed by fire. Signed His Excellency, the Governor of North Carolina, by Judge Richard Henderson. April 2nd, 1773. I'm sorry, Sam, real sorry. Judge Henderson. He's a friend of yours, ain't he, Daniel? Oh, he's just a servant of the law, doing what he thinks is his duty. There's only one duty we've got, to Sam and to each other. We've got to stand up to them. I advise you men to disperse. Return to your homes peacefully. Shooting ain't gonna stop anything, Mordecai. Spilling blood's no answer. You got a better one? Elbow room. Now, don't you go start talking about Kentucky again. I've been listening to you talk about that for a lot of years. There's only one way to settle this argument, and ain't with words. Unless in the ones doing the talk and ain't got no more backbone than a suckling shoat. Now, mind your tongue, Mordecai. You know how Daniel feels about fighting. Yeah, speaking of fighting, you're just itching for a tussle, ain't you? That's right. And if I got lick you or four lick them, that suits me fine. It's a shame to waste all that energy. Stop talking and start fighting. Like I say, it's a waste of energy. Now, come on, why don't we put it to some good use, like, like Bill and Sam here, a new barn. You're not going to talk your way out of this one, Daniel. Where do you think it'd best be put up, Sam? Why, uh, same place it was, I guess. Good. Any objections to our using the old foundation? We had to do it, Daniel. It was an order. Sure, sure. That's not what I asked you. Go ahead, use it. Well, I got some good ridge poles I can spare. Anybody else got anything to help Sam out with? I got some oak beams. Sam's welcome to all I've got. I'll help Sam all I can. But I ain't licking the boots of no militia. Well, as soon as she cools down, we'll set to work. Squire. Today was just a truce, you know that, Daniel. I know. I hate going against you, Daniel, but Mordecai's right. Sooner or later, we're going to have to stand up to the militia. The rebels can't keep turning the other cheek. Speak what's on your mind, Squire. I mean you're going to have to stop preaching peace. We're going to have to fight, Daniel, and you're going to have to do your share. A share of violence? Why, it goes clean against my nature, you know that. But we have no choice, Daniel. Else we all end up in debtor's court. Like you. Everybody knows you're going again tomorrow. That's right. It's the law. Either you obey the law or you move on. The law? Well, law or no law. We ain't taking it laying down. And Cecil ain't gonna hang. Mm-hmm. And I take things at my own gate. Single harness. judgment, Governor. Really? Those men out there are farmers, not criminals. They feel they have a just grievance against the Crown. That'll be enough, Henson. I want to hear no more about taxes. Well, it's quite obvious that I'm correct. Yadkin Valley is the hotbed of the rebel movement. 
But Calvert didn't kill that tax collector. He merely assaulted a government servant in the performance of his duty. What's going on in this country, sir, can lead to general revolt. The flames of sedition must be put out before they can spread. What would happen if it gets out of hand? Nevertheless, Calvert hangs. Bring my carriage to the back door quickly. Surely you're not leaving, Governor? I, I certainly don't intend to dignify this sordid event by watching it. Good day, sir. Cecil Calvert! Hold on, Mordecai. You and Squire acted a trifle hasty. Don't bite into this, Daniel. Stay out, Daniel. This ain't your quarrel. Any special reason why you want to waste good hemp on him? Because he's an overdressed, strutting young jackass. Oh, no. I think you got him all wrong. What? He can't help being what he is. Why, he's going to be a captain someday, maybe even a general. Naturally, he's got to start in young doing things all wrong. Your friend Henderson ain't so young, is he, Daniel? We're going to tar and feather him and burn the courthouse down for good measure. Kind of an expensive bonfire, ain't it? You've all been yelling about taxes. Building a new courthouse is only going to add on more taxes. He's got a point I ain't as good as talking as you, Daniel, but I'm gonna wrestle you into knots. Well, now, you might just do that, Mordecai. Only I don't see as how it's gonna settle anything. It'll settle who has the right to say what's to be done. No holes barred, Daniel. Tooth and claw. All right, but just remember, I'm on record as being against it. Again it or not, it'll settle our differences once and for all. Have it your way. Get up! Get up! Hold on now, Mordecai. You said wrestle. You can't talk your way out of this, Boone.
got an arm on it. Remember, Mordecai, this was your idea. <laughs> You sure enough earned the right to have your say, Daniel. So say it. Thank you, Cecil. I think I will. What I got to say is simple. Most of you have heard it before. Our problem, yours and mine, is this. We're just plumb running out of geography. It's a mean small life when a man's got to haggle over every foot of ground he works. And quarreling like we done today will do about as much good as kicking a hog barefooted. <laughs> What's the answer, Daniel? Kentucky? That's right. It's a creation big land. Just running over with the good things of life. You tell them, Squire, you seen it. Well, Daniel's right. There's an ocean of flowers and plenty of game and nobody to talk sassy to you. Not even tax collectors? <laughs> <laughs> well, the ones that'll go that far will be too tired to talk. <laughs> and hunting. Why, near one of them salt licks, I seen a buffalo so big, I had to look three times to see all of it. <laughs> You ain't talking about hunting now, are you, Daniel? Nope. I'm talking about settling. Settling? Yep. If the answer's so simple, why ain't you picking up and leaving? Well, now, that's a good question, Mordecai. Fact is, I'm turning it over in my mind right now. Anybody want to buy a good farm? But, Daniel, you can't do it. You owe the debtor's court. So, let them take their money from the sale. Well, do I hear any takers? 200 acres of good bottom land. And I'll throw in that blasted plow for good measure. <laughs> and then what'd you do, Pa? Well, I sneaked up I on... I wish you me a big buffalo, ain't I, Pa? That's you will, boy. That's you will. How many figure going with us, Pa? Oh, as many as has good sense. Children. I want to talk to you, Father. Go to bed, please. Yes, Ma. Didn't you hear your Ma, honey? I'm scared, Pa. Scared? Of what? Kentucky sounds so big and so far away. <laughs> There's nothing to be scared of, as long as you think on one little piece of land, the one we're going to be living on, with your ma planting flowers like she always does. Now, you give me a kiss and skedaddle. Good night. So, you sold the farm. Well, uh, I had to, had to burn my bridges. Daniel. Do you know what it's meant to me, the way you always had to see what was on the other side of the mountain? Yes, Rebecca. I know. Do you know how I kept myself from going out of my mind with loneliness? Alone at night. I put on this wedding dress and think back to all the plans we made when we were married. I'm sorry. Those times when I when I thought you were dead. Do you know how I kept myself from crying? 
I'd take one of the children to bed with me. And I knew I wouldn't allow myself to cry. But honey, that's all over. We'll be together all the time now. No, Daniel. Ever since I was a child, I've heard people talk. The ones who tried to settle in the wilderness. What it's like to hunt for your supper in the winter when there's nothing to hunt for. When you see Indians axing your young ones in your own dooryard. But others have faith in me. Why, Cecil Calvert will come with his wife. The Watkinses with their two children. For the first time, Daniel, I will not do what you ask me to. Why, Rebecca! I, I don't know the children and I will move in with my folks in town. Rebecca, I love you too much to force you to do anything. But I'm going. This will go to your grandfather, Brian, son. Yes, sir. What about Mr. Finley's old wagon? Well, we just leave it where it is, I guess. Pa, why can't I go with you? I know how you feel about Kentucky, son. But you must stay here with your ma. Help her all you can, will you? Calvert, Cecil, about ready to get started? I'm getting this twitches bull in fly time. Good. <laughs> Mordecai. Well, you do talk real persuasive, Daniel. You know something, Mordecai? Maybe I'm wrong. Sometimes, maybe it's better to fight a man. Lick him or get licked. Might end up with a friend for life. That's right. In talk, Daniel. Let's get lined up, folks. Time to get started.
whither thou goest, I go, Daniel. I thank thee kindly, Rebecca. Oh. Come all you fine, brave neighbors who have a mind to go to settle in Kentucky and chase the buffalo in some far distant country. Depended a lot on every handmade bullet he shot. The one thing he never learned was this he never learned how to miss. He never learned how to miss. He never learned how to miss. I guess no man'll ever be Dan'l. I guess no man'll ever be Dan'l, ever be Dan'l Boone. 